Welcome to part three of Bridal Awareness, where I'm going to be talking about stowed. In contrast to the other three deployment methods, when we are stowed, our bridal and pilot chute are not exposed prior to us exiting. For this reason, I feel that a lot of people kind of have a out of sight, out of mind attitude towards going stowed, but I'm hoping I can point out a couple of things in this video that will get people thinking about everything a little bit deeper. First, I'm going to talk about packing the pilot chute. There are many different ways to do this, and from what I've seen out in the wild, they all seem to work just fine. And it, this is one of those things that I constantly question myself on and wonder if technique is actually important because I see everybody having success using a wide variety of different methods very similar to how you pack your canopy. And over the last 10 years, I've changed my canopy packing procedure many times because I've found certain tips and tricks that have made the process more efficient, but I fail to do that with packing my pilot chute. The way I do it today is pretty much the exact same as how I initially learned 10 years ago. If anybody out there does find a flaw with the way that I'm doing it or has a critique or thinks that there could be a more efficient way, please let me know. When I start to pack the pilot chute, the first thing I'm going to do is stage the bridle in the channel along this bottom corner. Some rigs will actually have a little channel that the bridle will rest inside and you can just tuck it in against it. Others will just kind of be free. It's just important to not put it up so deep that it could accidentally wrap around the bottom flap and potentially get snagged on something. Following that, I'm going to close my flap and continue. I like to do this now versus after the pilot chute goes in so I know how much bridle I have left to work with and I don't have to start pulling the bridle out from the mesh Next, I'll run my fingers down the length of the bridle, taking out any twists as I go. And when I get to the pilot chute, I'll give it a couple of fluffs back and forth just to make sure it's working. Then make a fist around the bottom of the mesh and run my hand all the way up it to where it meets the ZP. Then I'll put it down on the floor with the ZP just right at the entrance to the BOC. I'll give the mesh a chop right at the end of the BOC and fold the mesh up into the middle and then stage the bridle right in the center of everything. Now S fold all the bridle. If you encounter any twists on the way, you can take them out. And then when we get here, I'm gonna leave a little bit of bridle coming out the bottom and also running across the top. Take one half of the mesh and fold it on top of the bridle and then do the same with the other side. You're essentially trying to cocoon the bridle with all of the mesh. I'll squeeze it down super tight and then place my foot on the bottom part of it. Now I'll run my fist back up to the top, flip the ZP over and I'm going to try to grab everything that my left hand is holding onto with my right hand. So I'll bring the ZP over, squeeze everything so I'm grabbing all of the mesh and all the folds in the bridle at the same time, and then bring the ZP down and around it. I'm gonna to try to milk all the slack out of it and build my handle essentially. As I bring it down, I'll run it all the way down the length of it. And you'll see with this particular method that I'm leaving a little bit of mesh exposed at the bottom. And we have everything nice and staged, bridle, mesh, ZP. I like to leave the mesh on the bottom because I feel like when you throw it out into the air, it'll start to inflate a little sooner. Now I'll move the bridle up above it, trap the back corner with my left foot, and then trying to keep everything in order and not bunching anything up, I'll just feed it in piece by piece and ideally fill the entire BOC with the pilot chute. Once I get it in, if there's a little bit of excess bridle, I'll just tuck that in on top of the pilot tune. And then adjust things a little bit just so everything is nice and snug. Some manufacturers make their BOCs super, super tight. So feeding it into the BOC can be really difficult. One thing that I was using for a very long time, and I still use it sometimes to be honest, is a 9 by 11 sheet of plastic just with the corners around it. That way, when you get everything set, you can just burrito it up like this. Get everything nice and tight. 
take any twists out of the bridle. And then when you feed it in, again, you'll trap the back corner, slide it all the way to the bottom, trap the cap, and just slide it right out. This is really great. I was using it for a really long time and I just tend to keep the plastic sheet in the back pad of my rig where you would stow your um, stash bag or just somewhere with my rigging tools. A very common method that you'll see is very similar to what I've just done here, but instead of leaving some mesh exposed at the bottom, people will actually cover the bottom of the mesh with the ZP and then they actually make a fold here my issue with this is when you stuff it in, it might actually be easier to get into the BOC doing it that way, but when you throw this out into the air, everything kind of has to shake around to separate before air can actually start to access the mesh and begin the extraction. So for me, that doesn't really make sense. Um, I know that I've seen that in lots of other people's packing videos, but I struggle to find out the reasoning for it. In my mind, having some mesh exposed at the bottom is just better in every way. It is a little bit more difficult to get into the BOC initially, but if you practice it a lot, it will get easier. I feel like packing your pilot chute is another one of these skills that there's really no excuse to not be competent with. Just as with packing your canopy, setting up a PCA, and setting up a handheld, you can practice all of this stuff at home in a safe environment where there's no stress. By doing that all the time and staying current with it, even if you're actually uncurrent with jumping, when you actually get back to an exit point, you're not gonna be stressed out and asking somebody else for a refresher on how to do things, and that'll just allow you to focus your attention and energy on the actual jump. If you ever arrive at an exit point and during your pin check, you notice that the bottom pin has popped, the best thing to do is completely remove the pilot chute and the bridle from the bottom corner, and redo everything. There's been a couple of videos done by David Lafargue and Apex Base on this, and I will leave the link in the description. Before you put your rig on, make sure that you give a full gear check, ensure that all the routing is correct, and I think it's a fantastic idea to get another one right before you jump. When you have your rig on and you plan on going stowed, I think it's a really good idea to do lots of practice touches. Even if you pack your pilot chute the exact same every single time, the size of your handle can sometimes be different. So it's important to be familiar with the size and the location of where it's at every single jump. It's also a good idea to practice reaching from different hand positions. If you're ever in a scenario where you end up unstable, you're super head down, on your side, on your back, when you reach for it, you want to be able to get to it immediately. When you actually grab the pilot chute, I think it's good to grab the ZP, the mesh, and the folds and the bridle all at the same time so that when you throw it, there's a little bit of weight to it and that will encourage everything to feed out clean. Before you actually throw the pilot chute, I think there should be a little bit of a lag time of you actually making sure that you have a solid grip before you actually throw it out. I'm not a huge fan of seeing people reach back and they do like snatch grab throw all in one motion. Ideally, it's a very deliberate, patient motion where you reach, grab, make sure you have a solid grip, and then throw. In the handheld video, I talked about my mantra, no wasted movements. I believe that when you're in free fall, every action that you do, be deliberate, be done with a specific intention, and equally be done with the minimal amount of effort required to get the desired result. So when we throw the pilot chute, ideally we're throwing it hard enough so that everything gets away from your body and into clean air, but not so hard that you actually throw yourself off access and cause instability. In the handheld video, I talked about how light a pilot chute is and how little effort it actually takes to throw it to the end of the bridle. The exact same idea is true when we go stowed. You don't have to throw your shoulders off access while reaching for the pilot chute and then when throwing it, use your entire shoulder where you throw it out to the side and flick your wrist. It's completely unnecessary. All you have to do is from a free fall position, rotate your hand back, grab the pilot chute, and then just using your elbow, give it a nice snappy throw out to the side. This will encourage everything to travel in a straight path out to the end of the bridle. If you are in the habit of using your entire arm and flicking your wrist as you throw, all you're doing is encouraging the pilot chute to spin and interact with the bridle, and this could cause problems. I don't wanna freak anybody out by watching these videos because people do it all the time, and so far from what I've seen, 100% of the time, things work out just fine. 
Having said that, there has been two fatalities slider up from a bridal and pilot shoot entanglement, and I do feel like it's just a matter of time before it happens slider down. This video is my effort to bring these things to light, so I encourage everybody to watch some video of your pitch technique and see if it can be improved. In this video, you can see one of my students on one of his first stowed jumps. You can see as he releases, the pilot shoot just spins around backwards, and as it continues to the end of the bridle, it interacts with everything and then just slips off to the side. This is actually a super common thing that a lot of people do, but we want to try to avoid it if at all possible. On this next jump, we were drilling, releasing the pilot chute a little bit earlier. Everything stays in order this time and continues out to the end of the bridle without spinning and it was much, much better. By throwing the pilot chute hard enough so that it hits the end of the bridle and by releasing it on time, this encourages everything to feed out cleaner and everything will actually happen faster as a result. This can be a very difficult thing to actually teach people because presumably when you start base jumping, you're coming into it with hundreds of repetitions of doing it a certain way when you're skydiving. And it's probably something that you haven't been thinking about. This is another thing that you can do by putting your rig on and just practicing your throw while you're at home. Personally, I think it's a good idea that when you grab the pilot chute, you have your palm facing the sky because then when you throw it out to the side, there's much less chance of you actually flicking your wrist and inducing a spin in the pilot shoot. So now that I've pointed a couple of those things out, have fun watching your videos and dissecting your technique. All right guys, that is it for part three of Bridal Awareness. Thank you again so much for watching. Hit me up with comments, questions, critiques, anything that I may have left out. And remember the key takeaways are try to limit as much unnecessary movement as possible. Do everything with intention and give the minimum amount of effort required to give the desired result. In the next video, I'll be talking about static lines, so I will see you then.